figure out if it was um, really all true or not. I'm confused. Well, I read what it said that what the author said in the back, and of course they had to make up a lot because she led a secret life. But you can hear me. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay, Michelle's checking on me because I have to do another Zoom next week. Um, that, <laughs> uh, she she had she had a very secret life. I would like to read the other book by the There's Another Person um, to see if a single author who had those facts, you know, could make it more. I don't know. I thought it was a little bit stilted, and it went on for a long time you know, about a lot of things. Was it all true? I don't know. Mm -hmm. And they don't know. It was readable and it's a wonderful yeah. story. And I would like to know more about her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm glad I read it. Yeah, me too. I agree. I, the last half of it went better. The first half, it was like, oh my goodness, what's going to happen now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's the one, Michelle. That's the other book that she's saying. Do you know what the name is? She just put it up there. Oh, I didn't see it. I'm sorry. It's Heidi somebody? Yeah. What did I do with it? She put it up where? Oh, she probably sent it to me. Hi, Michelle. I don't know. I can't hear you. Oh. Can you hear us, Michelle? I hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear. Okay. But I guess you can't hear me. Now I can. I hear you. Now you can? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's in chat, but it's an illuminated life by Heidi Artizone. A R D. Yeah. Okay. Illuminated I see, I see. life. Oh, I see it. It's on, it's on chat on the side. I see it. Oh, oh, on the chat. And I would like. I would like to read that one. I would rather be in, in Kindle, but hey, what are you going to do? You know? <laughs> Using the same facts. You yeah. know, she wrote it somewhat differently. And the other, they were two authors and they're thrilled with how they interpreted it. And it definitely was a very popular book. Mm -hmm. But if you know, if we want to know how factual it was, I guess, I don't know, I wouldn't mind reading, there's a book about her father too. Mm. I, I wonder, um, have you read others from um, Marie Benedict? No. Yeah, I mean, I read the, uh, what's the, who's the actress? Uh, Hedy Lamar. Oh yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, Hedy Lamar, that was excellent. But they, um, I mean, I thought that it was real. I can't imagine maybe there was you know a little well i mean she different. really she really was not a white woman and she really did all right. those things yeah what they don't I know they, too much about her early childhood and i wish they had given a re a photograph of what she really looked like there, i wonder if we can when look, you look up. on google you can yeah. see some you can looked, yeah i thought she looked like she had black, you know. What was her name? Oh, Bill. Her oh. name was Bell Marion Greener. No, Green. And then they changed it to Bell DeCosta Green. Oh yeah, right. DeCosta. I didn't even write that down. Okay. Yeah, that's right. They did change it. Oh, I should just yes. I've been, I was been very curious what she really looked like. Yeah. You know, there's a new show called the gilded age on hbo and i wonder since they ha i have i don't have access to hbo but i wonder if she comes out in that show because that was the time when she was working for him oh, that she went to that all those good. parties yeah yeah that would be good to know it must have you been know, a tough life though i mean huh? always having to be on guard and never wondering if your secret would get out. I, I don't think she had a good life at all. I think she lived for her family. Okay. Yeah, that was the sad part about it. Yeah. When, 
when she brought home the bonus or he left her the money and the will mm -hmm. and the the family was like partying in the kitchen and like, what can we do with it quiet and she was hurt because nobody thanked her they just looked at her as the messenger of all the money and they took her for granted that she actually had to work for that money yeah for sure and, and I felt so bad about her relationship with her father because she loved her father yeah well the other person I think the Heidi Artisan person had some she may have met with him other time so they only know they only presume that it was that one time because she went to Chicago and there was no need for her to go to Chicago. Okay. But it's it's like a regular dysfunctional family. I mean, she was the hero child and she was the one that carried everything. Ah, oh, there she well, is. There she is. Oh my goodness, is that really her? She's not beautiful at all. Or is that the mother? No, that's her. Oh. Gosh, you know, it, it's something because I think that she... Oh, that looks a little... She was younger there, probably older in the other picture. Do you all think she's as beautiful as the book described her to be? For back, I guess for back then that she was, I, I don't know. <laughs> the way that they were dressed and every, I, I don't know. I, uh, they must've thought she was Middle Eastern or something, you know, because she is a little darker, you, you know, but she probably can um, pass as white. Oh yeah, I think. She could, and her siblings, some of them, more so. Hmm. Um, did you ever read The Vanishing? Is it the, uh, Michelle, is it The Vin Vanishing Half? Oh, uh, yes. And it's the it two is sisters. It's by Brit, somebody, I can't remember. Yeah, Brit. It's by two, uh, it's about two sisters. One looks white and the other is totally black. You know what I mean? But they were, you know, sisters and one lives like a white person. The other person lives as a black person. I, I like that one. Yeah, it was interesting. Because they, they seem to have real emotions. I don't think she had real emotions. They didn't give her real emotions in the book. She was kind of flat. She had fear. Yeah. But was she but ever she had, happy? Well, she had, I think she was happy with that guy that she was going out with. Oh, he, he was a sleaze bag, I think. Oh, I, I agree with you. I totally agree with you. A sleaze bag. And then when she found out what he was really up to and she stayed with him, that's when you would oh. feel bad for her to think that's what she, that's the love in her life. Oh, I agree. Hey there, Jennifer. Oh, hello. Oh, hi, Jennifer. Yes, I can see you. It looks like oh, a scarf that you made. Okay, I just have a picture of Bella. Oh, I guess <laughs> we were just looking right. at it. You know. Oh, you are okay. Just to okay. see what she is. Uh, just to see what she looked like. Like she had a she had a nice profile, probably better yeah. than a full face. You know, nice she profile. had a nice bone structure. Oh, there she is. Oh, there's, yeah, look, another, there's another picture. Now she looks oh, yeah. a lot lighter. Oh, that yes. looks, that's a nice, that, oh. Oh, yes. Wow. Very elegant. Whoa. Wasn't it yes. interesting how when she went to the parties and the African-American people knew that yes. she was one of them and yet they kept it quiet, the sudden or the, the nuances of familiarity, but um, they didn't say anything to her. Oh, I don't, well, that's interesting. I, I don't know. I think she looks African American. I did too. I think that maybe more people knew and just didn't discuss it. But I, I don't I don't know that. Do you think that he knew? He may have. Maybe that's why he secretly liked her because she was so exotic. I don't think he cared other than for what it would mean for him in the business world and the social world. Right. But he sounded like the kind of man that would kind of maybe like it because it well, would be something different. Yeah, yeah. I think he was he supposedly such that. a great lover. <laughs> I don't know. It almost doesn't seem true. Now, is that library still there or is that one of those buildings that they tore down to build um, a, a high rise and 
New York. I believe it's still there. I thought after I reading this the, book, I even looked it up. The Vanderbilt mansion was torn down a lot. I saw Anderson Cooper when he was touting his book and he said a lot of those houses have been torn down. But oh. I wondered if this, I, I'm surprised I've never been to this library. If it's open to the public and it's so wonderful. Yeah. Is it Michelle? Yes. It's still there? Yes, according to this, it was just remodeled to um, its 1906 grandeur uh, in, I believe it was like 2010. Oh, wow. And it's on Fifth Avenue? Let me see. What was it? it was called the Morgan Pierpont Library? J.P. Morgan, Morgan Pierpont Morgan Library. Oh, okay. Morgan Pierpont Library. Uh huh. It's uh, today they call it Morgan Library and Museum. Museum. Okay. I'd love to see that. We should go on a field trip. Go see the building. That would be fun. <laughs> yeah. Can you organize that, Michelle? <laughs> I'll do my best. I'll do my best. <laughs> we need a van. <laughs> They're hard to come by around here. Oh, oh, goodness. I mean, she was a savvy person. I mean, just yes. the way she did the deals and everything. She had a business sense. You know, she knew yeah. what she... She knew how to do that for sure. Yeah, she did. She... But she was immersed in it. You know, I mean... Yeah. That was, that was of, her role. How would you think of her... Um, relationship with his daughter vicious oh yeah vicious, <laughs> vicious. she was after her because she but you can understand that i mean i had a very close relationship with my father and i would have been vicious if he had a close relationship with someone that worked with him like that because you know there was a jealousy factor yeah, yeah and of course the daughter was hiding her sexual preferences from her family that's and that's really what saved bell but i thought that i could see where the daughter really would did want to make her admit what she really was but she wasn't able to because i i think she was savvy enough she protected herself but at oh, the yeah. end she admitted it to her when they had their final confrontation i think they i think she did yeah but then again, is that part true or is that part false? I don't know. Jennifer, yeah. did you think it was all true to the to every point? Yeah, yes. I know she does a lot of research on her books, a lot. Oh, the, so she, this woman is a biographer then? Well, she was a lawyer and then she, cut, because I'm reading another one wow. by her right now, Her Hidden Genius. And so she was a lawyer, she writes, and then she does so, she hears about a woman like this, like Kelly Lamar, and um, she does a lot of research, years and years of research. And when, and when I finish the book, I'm always so interested in, and I look it up, I Google it, and it seems most of it is true, what she's writing about. Have you found that, Michelle? Okay. Too? Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, oh look my at that. goodness. Whoa. Whoa, that's wow. beautiful. That's the rotunda, I guess. Mm. Is it open to the public or do you have to have an appointment? Because I guess all these rare doc all these rare rarities are still there. Mm. I would assume that's the part I like them talking about the ancient books. Okay. Yeah. Apparently it's you know, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday and Sunday from 10 30 to 5. Oh, wow. Did you say so by appointment or? Uh, it doesn't say by appointment. Mm -hmm. huh. You know, we're very fortunate that we have people that are interested in this and that these books are saved. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know? And that by reading a story, you're educated about it, whereas you would never think about it on your own. At least I wouldn't. Maybe no. from a, like, like they say, like at the Vatican, they have the Vatican Museum. <laughs> And there are ancient Bibles and manuscripts from biblical times, but literature 
don't even think about it, but it was, that was the part when they would open up the book and look at the paper and the way it was printed. I, I, you learned a lot by reading yeah. this book, I thought. Mm -hmm. I do too. I agree. Have, have Did you anybody... study about these manuscripts in school, Jennifer? No, no, I didn't know anything about it mm -hmm. till mm -hmm. I read, till I read this book. Mm -hmm. How about you, Has Michelle? Any... No, I, I had, I know not think about it either. Mm -hmm. Some of them, I mean, some of them, we all like the death of Arthur, Mark Arthur, yeah. that that was his big thing. It was about the death of Arthur and it was of you Arthur. King Arthur? King Arthur. Oh, oh yes. yes. Oh, oh yes. Arthur. Oh, yes. Okay. And that was I've his, forgotten a lot. that was his big thing that he wanted. Some of them I did, but then the I read a lot of historical oh. mysteries in their medieval, you know, like the one I'm, the ones I'm reading right now are are gotten from the uh, Anglo-Saxon register, you know, oh. which was written like starting in 900. <laughs> you know? So those things are in there. Mm. I like old stuff. Yeah. <laughs> has, has anybody else read any of her other books, Marie Benedict's other books? Not me. Yes. I, I thought I yes? read one of them. Did she read the, did she write the one about the, the maid. Yes. yes. Carnegie's maid. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's the only that one. one I haven't read. <laughs> what was the, what was the point of that? Was that, was she an interesting person? Well, was I haven't she... read that one. Do you know, Kathleen? Do you remember? No. Well, one I loved was the one about Hetty Lamar. Me too, Jennifer. Oh, that was excellent. 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 I knew about her that she had something to do with cell phone development, but I never knew all all this what yeah yes. was she a spy was she it. a spy during well, the war during the war her husband her first husband who was very abusive was a world war um two um munitions arm arm yes is that the word and so she she would always be in the room as a hostess that's why she became the only woman in the room and she learned so much she would listen to what they were oh. saying so it was very interesting. And I'm reading one right now. Her newest one is called Her Hidden Genius, which is about Rosalind Franklin, who helped discover DNA. It's a little scientific. Parts of it are very scientific. And so I was like, what? What is she talking about? But it's good because I wouldn't have known it all. So was this Benjamin that, Franklin's wife or? No, no. Rosalind Franklin. Um, it's at, set right after World War II in oh, Paris okay. and then London is where I am right now. Mm -hmm. And then another, sorry, another one, the first one I ever read was the other Einstein about Einstein's okay. first wife. That was really good. Michelle, you read that one? I did. That was good. Boy, he stole her work. He did. He was really a scoundrel after reading that. Did anybody read Lady Clementine? I was. I read that one too. Yes, that was that. Good? That was, was good, good too. She really I, supported her Winston, even over her children. Is that yeah. one about the daughters too, or is that a different one? That's There's a different one. one. Churchill sis, Churchill sisters. That yeah. was good too. If you like Winston <laughs> Churchill, that was yeah, very that was, good. That, that was good. Looks like she's got a couple others that are only available on Audible too. Smoke Signal and Agent 355, which I think is a male spy in um, the Revolutionary War. So that one's probably great too. Oh, yes. I have to get Audible just for that. Well, I thought what was interesting, I read the Kindle. Did everybody else have the, the all the author's annotation at the back? Mm -mm. I had it oh. that far. I'm like, because they went into detail about how how thrilling it was for them to do it together because one was a black woman author and one was a white woman author and they collaborated and they came to understand each other but the the black author or the woman of color said that it usually ended up being the dialogue of the one that wrote this book. What's her name? Identity. Identity. Yes. Um, and I, I thought that that it lost something in that. Mm. Hmm. If, if I found that it was like plotting sometimes, 
because she said that she would say, oh, wow, let's kick it down the road or something. And then she would rephrase it. <laughs> and sometimes when she rephrased it, it was like, oh, how boring. <laughs> oh, interesting. I, they didn't say they struggled with it. They were thrilled to death with, you know, what they did with it. And it was popular. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's mm -hmm. popular for that reason. Mm -hmm. She, mm -hmm. she, the, the, uh, the other author understood about people, you know, passing for white. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a heavy concept. I it would is. Think. You're talking it's about the African American woman that wrote the book, The Personal Librarian, the co author. Yes, yes mm -hmm. the co author of that. And do you think that they wrote the book together because of the times we're in now? Or did they do it to give each other's perspective of the same topic? I read the part at the end where each of them told their story, but I, I still didn't understand why they wrote the book together or how did that come to be? I think that... Um... The, her, her publisher introduced them and thought that's, that it would right. work. Okay. I think that's how it was. And okay. she wasn't sure before she met her, but it said they, and it was COVID time and, you know, they, mm -hmm. they only talked on mm -hmm. Zoom or whatever. And within oh, yes, yes, 10 minutes, yes. they were friends or they feel like they were sisters. But yet mm -hmm. I think that um, whatever. <laughs> I'm bad on names. Um, I'm bad on everybody's names except you guys. <laughs> yeah. That, um, I, I don't know what I was going to say. That, that, the main, the main author, the one that wrote all the books. Um, Marie Benedict. Yeah, that I think that she overrode the other one sometimes. Hmm. Oh, you know, because it was more of the stilted thing. That's why I would like to read the Heidi Artisan and maybe you get a more medium or maybe it's exactly right. So is Heidi the white lady or the African-American lady? She wrote that other book, The Illuminated. She wrote the other book. Oh, the one that, oh, oh, she, okay, okay. Well, what was the, the name? Okay, well, it doesn't matter. The Those one that's ones. based more on on the facts. I got you. I got you. She just, okay. Well, Michelle, what did you have to ask us? Do you have no, notes from I somewhere do. about the book? I do. So how might you explain Belle's rise to such breathtaking heights in society and her profession at a time when women, especially African-American women, face such blatant discrimination and exclusion? Do you think she possessed certain personality traits that yielded this incredible outcome? And if so, what were they? I think it was because she worked for such a powerful and wealthy man that that gave her a panache to travel through the world like no other person can. Just like even in modern days, if you're, even though I don't care for him, if you worked for Donald Trump, that gives you a certain entree into things. And I'm talking pre-presidential tenure, um, it gives you an entree into the world where most of us don't get to go. So I think it was just she was sort of riding on his coattails. I mean, I think mm -hmm. she was a very good she woman strong. of her own volition. But I think part of it was she, I don't think she would accomplish what she did if she worked for, I mean, a regular library or whatnot. Um, and I don't know too much. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't know too, it, they didn't talk about her, her early life, you know. Didn't she go to Princeton? She worked at Princeton. She worked she did at, work Princeton at Princeton because of her she, friends. She, came up, she wasn't a registered librarian. She was very good at, the, at yeah. library skills. Yeah. You know, she didn't have a master's in library science. No. I don't think. No, she didn't. She didn't. Just, oh, just I think she was brilliant in in that field, mm -hmm. which may have Oh, she was her. friends with his nephew. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. And he mm -hmm. 
was the one that introduced her to his to her uncle. She just happened to be in the right place at the right time. <laughs> but I think yeah. that well, wouldn't have mattered if she didn't have the personality that she did. You know, I mean, like she wouldn't. That would have only taken her so far, and then he would have kicked her out if she if she was not doing a good job. Oh, absolutely! Um, she she right? had right away, talent, okay. a good person to do yeah. the job that she did. Right, right. But I think that she rose so quickly. I mean, and also she had access to so much money that she could buy and bargain for all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. really, money was no object. It sounded like it was for just they enjoyed. Yeah the game of the cha- the the thrill of the chase to get the mm-hmm. object. Mm-hmm. But she had to know how to do that. And she had yeah. to have some good skills in figuring out what he was like. She was a mm-hmm. sexy woman, it sounded like. It sounded like that's kind of like, you know, she used her <laughs> self to her advantage. She really, yeah. the men really liked her. There you go. Mm. I think it was the sassiness that they liked, though, because that was different. I mean, you had your women who were like the little ladies at home, and then you had your high society, and she was different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She came from a very prestigious African-American family in Washington, D.C., so she knew how to conduct herself, and her father really educated her in the art world Mm -hmm. when she was little, because he took her to all those museums and things which is very important. She was very lucky in that respect that her father cared for her. He picked up something in her, if you remember, from a young mm-hmm. age. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was interesting when they went back to the university where the parents taught and they talked about post-Civil War and how the Black, the black people were, tr- the ex-slaves and the educated Black people were treated before the Jim Crow laws came in. Yeah. And then remember when they were leave, they had to leave and they, the people in the street spat on them and threw things at them. And that made the parents realize that that's when the, mo- that was the turning point for the mother, it seemed like she knew then that if she had children, she was going to try to pass them for white. The mother is the real politician here, Mm -hmm. if you think about it. Mm -hmm. The decision she she made for her children and how she let it break up her marriage. And I I think she kind of had a good point back then. They didn't have any opportunity otherwise. Mm -hmm. I mean, they could have been, they were teachers, but they wouldn't have lived the life. What, What did you all think about all that? I thought she had a good self-protective the mother. thing going on, the mother. Mm-hmm. And she was able to bring most of, the, of their children in with it. But I mean, then she had to leave her family of origin, which bothered her, but that was not as important. And then at, at the end of the book, which I, I should have had, kept it on here because then I could, you know, because there was a whole lot at the end of the Kindle about what might've happened and did this really happen? I mean, did the father leave and start another family or they don't know for sure. They know from the Bernstein's letters what about that relationship, but she didn't leave anything after her for people to Oh, know. that's right. She burned all her papers. Yeah. And his letters were left somehow even though they were supposed to be burned. So the they father's all- letters were. No, well, isn't the there boyfriend, a boyfriend? The boyfriend. Oh, the, the boyfriend. The b- burnt, burnt, burnt scene. Scene or whatever. Hmm. But, yeah. Hey, what would you think of that relationship of him and his wife? I thought that was <laughs> I know. a little <laughs> minor. You're saying here, Catherine. <laughs> no. No. But maybe that was all she could tolerate. She couldn't tolerate not having the child. Mm. But maybe that's all of a relationship she could tolerate. I don't know. We're I talking about Bill? Person. Yes. I think she was an unusual person mm-hmm. to carry out that throughout her life. She really didn't have a whole lot for her that went on. Mm-hmm. But she liked the thrill of, um, of the hunt, too. She did. She and did. I think that was, that's what made her day go that she was in that you know she enjoyed that just as much as he did 
You mean as much as Morgan did? Yeah, as um, much as Morgan or, did. Excuse mm-hmm. me. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. What did you think of the relationship between the two of them? The way they really kind of liked each other, but they kept it professional. Yeah. And is that really true? Did did they really keep it professional? I don't know. I'm not sure we know that. Um, I think that. Um, I think they had to keep it somewhat professional or she'd have been gone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's kind of what the book implied that because right, yeah. and he admitted it. He says, I don't have a very good track record with women. Right. So I'd rather not get involved with you because I just know percentages go towards they all end up in a failure. Yeah. He had like four mistresses going at one time. <laughs> it was something. <laughs> <you mean? laughs> she had to schedule the mistresses. <laughs> that really must have been hot, tough for his daughter. Yeah. yeah. He, you know, having sense. to deal with that all the time. No wonder well, his think... daughter didn't go into a heterosexual relationship. You know, yeah. it was like, I wanted to live <laughs> like my mother. No. <laughs> yeah. I think Bella was smart enough to keep herself away yeah. from that too mm-hmm. she wanted to hold on to her position mm-hmm. and i think she thought she would lose it if she became a mistress mm-hmm. oh she would wait until like outside the door until he actually called her instead mm-hmm. of saying oh i figured you would need me and pop <laughs> in because he was reticent she could read people well mm-hmm. i think yes she had good protective skills mm-hmm. and the mother had good protective skills yeah. but Probably the mother. They didn't go together. Mm-hmm. Did they say how she died at the end? No, I forgot. Oh, she died in like 19. They said when she died, didn't they, at the end? She I died in like the 40s, didn't she? She died oh. in uh, 1950. 1950? Yes. Okay. And oh. she kept up the library till the end of her life, yes? Wow. Did she? For the son, she, I, I mean, until she retired. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I guess it, in, in a fashion, she wasn't, I don't think, obsessed with it like she was with him. But okay. I think to honor him and what they accomplished, it sounded to me like that's why she wanted to stay there. Probably. And the son mm-hmm. was a good guy. He sounded like yeah. a great guy. Yes. Mm-hmm. And the amount of money, what did he leave her? Sixty thousand dollars. Fifty. He died in fifty. 000. Oh, fifty. And but that was an enormous amount of money back yeah. then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he said, um, she said it would have paid for ninety houses. Really? Whoa. Wow. That's what she said. Paid for what? Ninety houses. She said because they said ninety we can buy houses. A house. Oh, wow. that's what she said. Ninety hmm. houses for who? Well, when was that? <laughs> Was that like in the 40s Probably. or the 30s yeah. still? Mm. He died before airplane travel, it sounded like. Because that it was was on a ship to mm-hmm. eat. He died in Egypt of some strange pneumonia or something. I thought he was going to, I thought he was, when I was reading it, I was waiting for the Titanic issue. Oh. <laughs> because I thought he was one of the men that died on the Titanic. On the Titanic, huh? But he was 13. supposed to be on the Titanic. I thought that I was sick. glad they brought that that's up. That's right. That's right. Yeah. He was. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he got sick with his terminal, his final illness, or his only yeah. illness. I don't know if he was his ever only ill illness. Before. Do you think it would make a good movie? It probably would. They're probably yeah. they would definitely give some life to it. You know. Yeah. And Halle, like Halle, 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 Halle Berry can play her. Halle Berry. Yeah. Yeah, that's play her. <laughs> She's made, she was on television recently and you, I could, I was, cause I, I had this on my mind. And now that I've seen the pictures today, I'd say Halle Berry is almost, I mean, she, she if this, if she, that, if she was at that time, she could have passed. And I think that issue yeah. has come up for her in the past. Mm-hmm. about the fact that she could pass mm-hmm. i don't i don't know it, it it amazes me the the passing the pictures of african-american people and i mean i know i have met some people before and you really wonder 
especially now where there's such a mixing of the white, the race, young white people mm-hmm. and young African American mm-hmm. people. I see people on TV, and I always say to my husband, "Is are they black or are they white?" Because mm-hmm. I don't know what they are. Right. Do you all have that happen? I can't tell. Well, sometimes, but I think it's not necessary now for people to pass. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's necessary that people respect people regardless of their color. But I, I mean, nobody's gonna. Well, they. I mean, things are still not good, but mm-hmm. we're not more open-minded that. now. Right. right. There you go. Yeah. More open-minded. And we don't have the, well, I don't know. They say we don't have, well, you, well, that's a whole subject for another day. It is. About the play of the African-American Michelle, person. do you remember another book recently and there were twin girls and one passed as black and one passed as white? That's the one we were talking the about. The Vanishing Half by Brit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That was yeah, interesting. That was, it was good. It, it was, was good. good. Yeah. I thought it was. It, Brit Bennett. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bennett. What was it? What was it? I'm sorry, Michelle. I couldn't hear you. The Vanishing Half by Brit Bennett. That's right. The Vanishing Half. Yes. Yeah. It was, it had some darkness in it. This one didn't oh, yeah. have as much darkness in it. Okay. No, no. She actually had a very good life. Yeah, she did. Uh-huh. Yeah. That was well, I guess time. she came from people that had a good life. You mm-hmm. know, she, she didn't really pull herself up from the gutter. Mm-hmm. You know, her her mother was a, a established family mm-hmm. that were known to have had black in their background, mm-hmm. and people were okay mm-hmm. with it. They eventually probably wouldn't have been okay with it. No, they Most were people. black. It's that they were making the reference to the plantation owners and the slave traders who would rape the black women. That's how come they were the family was so white. Why? But because oh. you had you know it was very confusing because of the Portuguese grandmother, but the Portuguese I'm grandmother telling. really was almost made up. That was. She it was wasn't made they up. weren't as Portuguese as they imply. And then when the book got towards the end, they brought it up and it was a very light amount. They just, that's how the mother's formula worked because she pulled out this descendant that was Portuguese. And then she was able to put that name into Belle's name. And that's how she was able to get her family to pass. I mean, I mean, as far as a name goes, and they really weren't lying when they said they were Portuguese, Mm -hmm. but they were African American descendants of slaves who had been abused by Mm -hmm. white men. Right. But they were freed slaves. I think that yes, her mother's yes. family didn't live in slavery. Her father was the son of a slave, even though he was supposedly very late. I'd like to see a picture of him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see a picture of the mother or the sister that was um, really, really light skinned. Every one of their family members, as I remember, did well. I mean, the, the son, wasn't yes. he a teacher or something, mm-hmm. you know, and they all were able to, uh, you know, be on their own. And the sisters were teachers, but they never said, were they teachers of African dark complected in black schools or in white schools? But back then, would that have been that they taught in black schools? Because... Did, did they yeah, have integrated schools in New York City in the um, back yeah, then? Her father mm-hmm. taught at whatever college it was as a pilot program. He was oh, the South he Carolina, to, yeah. University of South Carolina. And it was a, oh. a pilot program, which they abandoned later. But right, he because was able of the Jim Crow. That. That's right. Yes. Yeah. It was right after the war or, you know, whatever it yeah. was, it was a and someone he knew had, you know, that that was that got him where partially where he was. Mm. And I think he was well liked. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, in that program, even the you know, even the students, you, you know what I mean. I think that he was well liked, and then 
those laws came into effect. Oh, yeah, because the father left because he was fighting for the plight of the educated Af African-American person. And they didn't call themselves African-American back then. They actually called themselves colored, but we oh, can't say right. that anymore. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, but he was fighting for that. And that's why I got so upset with the mother. How could I stay married and you want to pass as white and I am yes. building my reputation oh, right. forgot by, yes. Okay. Yeah, You're that's right. right. I, mm -hmm. Yeah. So they were in a quandary the, all they around. Sure were. Yeah. They sure were. Mm -hmm. So I guess we all liked it, huh? <laughs> yeah. Did anybody not like it? <laughs> I, I, I like the way she writes. Yes. And it's interesting how she gets these different women. She was, was writing about this woman in um, about the DNA that she, somebody mentioned her. And then she was very interested and she started doing research on it and just kind of word of mouth. That you heard about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is this? Why are you talking about the author, Jennifer? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. How she finds these women. Well, the mm -hmm. only one that mm -hmm. we knew a lot about was Agatha Christie one, but the other women are not so well known. Yeah. Yeah. And they did a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So well, women are wonderful beings, aren't they? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Goes without saying. Yes. It's <laughs> nice that we can people write All about that we us. can do. <laughs> Yes. Legends in our own mind. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, goodness. What's the next one, Michelle? I forgot. Oh, yeah, what's the, the next one? We have not chosen yet. Well, I uh -oh. you we're you we're going week. to lunch next week, Wednesday next week. at 1130. So if you get a chance to join me, you're welcome. Now, okay. I cannot come. I work that day, but mm -hmm. um, I would like to come, but I can't. But well, I'll we'll be very excited to see what if you have suggestions and Karen also, if you have suggestions, yeah, definitely send them. You know, I just finished a book that is definitely a five star, and, but it's brand new, you know, so we will maybe next year we'll read it. But it, The Extraordinary Life of Sam Hill. That's on my list of things I want to read. I've heard is that a of, real person? No, uh, Michelle, it's awesome. And okay. you know what I like about it? It's short chapters. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that makes things go by fast. Extraordinary huh? life of Sam. Oh. Well, I, I can say I read three chapters and it's, you know, five minutes. Oh, <laughs> wow. Who is Sam Hill? I actually um, Karen, just give us like, just oh, okay. a very person. It is a person. It's a young, um, it's about his life, the extraordinary life of uh, Sam Hell. And he's born, born with red eyes. Oh. And, and so, you know, he goes through school, everybody's calling him the devil's son. He's going, you know what I mean? But his mm -hmm. parents, he's an only child and it's just about his life. And it, I just like the characters. But he's not an albino. He's not. No, uh, no, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. no, but uh -huh. it's just, you know, how he goes through life. And it, it just, my daughter, Casey, you know, told me, you got to read this mom. And oh, she goes, okay. I actually, I never reread books. But I actually ordered the book and I'm rereading it again because I. But it's know. fiction. Wow. It's, it's it is fiction. Fiction. Yeah. fiction. yeah. Okay. Um, well, that's one. That is. That's yeah, but I, you know, it's a brand new one, and I don't know if you know. Mm -hmm. Should I have some money have to you spend all, this year. Oh, ever read a book? Any Ann Patchett books? Yes. I have. Yes. We yes. read one, didn't we? Yes, so uh, the Dutch House. We read the Dutch, yeah, house. Dutch house. I read. I recently read. I had. She was recommended by a friend of mine in Edenton, and I read the Dutch House, and I really liked it. But yeah. I think it was Bel Canto. Bel Canto read, is but I wonderful. Can't, I read, but I I only could read seventy pages. I just. I, I had an old copy and the print was really little. Oh, so nice. I, I'm going to try to get it in large print, but is it worth hanging in there with it? Yes. Oh, Definitely. yes. Oh, oh yes. he really recommended it. It's he's a, a retired, he's an Episcopalian priest and he really how, recommended it. How she got this idea. I mean, um, yeah. just on, yeah, what a story it was. Bel Canto. Um, yeah. Bel Canto. It's better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And well, I've oh heard that her nonfiction books are very good. Yes. All her books are good. Yes. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. She has yes. a brand new book. I, I looked it up. 
Oh, uh, after the Dutch it. House? Okay. No, the Dutch mm. House was written maybe four, three or four years ago. Yeah. I mm -hmm. just returned it yesterday, but um, she has a brand new book. If you look it up on Amazon, but okay. Precious Days. Okay. Precious Days. That sounds right. That sounds right. Precious but I, I'm just going to say maybe that's an author. I, I'm always looking for new authors. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> but I had never read her before. These Precious Days. Okay. Oh, oh. yeah, stick with Bel Canto, Ruth. That yes. just was, what a story. Okay, oh, okay, I yeah, will. I recommend I'll, that to a lot of people. Mm. I'm going to try to get it in large print. And then that other one that she wrote, Michelle, do you remember the other one about the women in the Amazon? And they would eat the bark from trees and they would be fertile till they were 70 years old. <laughs> <laughs> till they were seven or 70? 70. Oh, 70. Oh, oh God, goodness. how horrible. Yeah. That. Yeah. Babies were right. 70. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds awful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my it goodness! Yeah. It's just this. I mean, she, I saw a picture of the author, and she runs a bookstore in Nashville. Yes, yes, um, yeah. And she's just this tiny little. Oh gosh, she comes up with these stories. It's just like, yeah. oh, <laughs> I forgot sure. what that one was called, but it's one of hers. I know. State of Wonder. State of was Wonder. That, okay, that's that, it. That's was that it? it? And it was good about this indigenous tribe in the Amazon and the, yes, and having babies when you're in their 70s. Oh my goodness. Because they would eat this bark <laughs> off the tree. <laughs> I mean, you couldn't even get down to be with the babies on the ground. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> or you could, but you wouldn't get up. <laughs> yes. Oh goodness. Mm. Awesome. Oh, I'm gosh. reading right now that book, Michelle, that um, you got, uh, that we're reading at night, the, uh, the Penguin Saved Veronica. Oh, yeah, is that good? Oh, I love it. I love that too. That's one I recommended actually. It's yeah. just so lighthearted and just oh. lovely story. Just lovely. It is. And it takes you to a whole different world. <laughs> yeah. It reminds me of Is Bernadette. it really about they're, penguins? Yeah. Yes. Huh? They're in there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's good. It's good. I'm trying to think of any other that I've read. Well, I got to ask your opinion. I hope it's not a bad a subject, but I have to find out your opinions. What do you think about all these parents, you know, wanting books out of the library in like Texas? It's awful. They're crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's awful. <laughs> Well, there's you mean there's like that sure one about the Holocaust that they the mouse the mouse one mouse. Yeah. It's, really, and, um, it's really political, you know, yes. it, and it, it and it'll go away in another wave. But I mean, you think? I think yeah, it's true. Right. You think getting your children the monkey bird out? It was like like that. I think you know, like in the forties and fifties, ah. and. It's like that again now because there was a whole lot of books like Little Black Sambo, you know, and things yeah. like that that we read. They were that was school. a charming story, but you you can't even say that anymore. No, um, no, because my friend Sambo in Edenton, he his mother told me that she she wishes she had kept some. He was named that because of that character. And his name is Samuel Bobbitt Dixon, but she said she wished, she told me before she died, she wished that she had kept the books because they're worth a fortune now. But I know we had one of those books. My mother was yeah. from the South and we love that story. Yeah. But, and, and like I said, the To Kill a Mockingbird, that's a beautiful story. It is a beautiful and it teaches a, an important lesson and they don't yeah. read that anymore. But there are probably, I'm sure that there were people I know. My mother was a, was an RN, but she was educated. She was a school nurse. You know, she was in the schools. One of my girlfriends, like, does your mother know that you're reading whatever it was? I think it was, I don't know. It wasn't Lady Chatterley's Lover. It was one of the ones that was on TV, something of <laughs> Tate and Place. Yes, I think it was. And I said, I yes. love that my, show. My mother said, she always said, look, you know, if you're reading, you're reading, you're going to go get these books anyway. 
she sent me to here and you know and uh, I don't know I, that's I like my don't. childhood friend and I got a copy of everything you ever wanted to know about sex and she gave she read it she gave it to me and my mother would have fainted on the couch if she saw it but my friend's mother said oh I think that it's good you're reading that and, and it just, and just it, and it, take different like ways that. for people to think but it's interesting it's like it it's like that it's like what does your group that you belong to think but my mother wouldn't have said you can't read it she just would have thought oh whatever but um it's i don't know i don't know now today i heard that now well this goes even further but you don't have to say whether you're a man or a woman anymore you just you can take your time to decide what you are oh, and i'm like excuse me god <laughs> created man and he created woman we are something <laughs> we're we're all something whether we want right. to be or not you can change oh, it if you want but you are yeah. something well, i think that's choose. probably i can't imagine you you can't right, take those the other end, end of it i choose. guess i just i think that like uh, you said i think that people will read what they're going to read yes any yes. way that they can you know what mm -hmm. i mean and if they find it interesting mm -hmm. you know and the reading has mm -hmm. anyone read the new book about anne frank Oh, no. there's, some, there's something that's come out about her recently. Oh, you know, I'm not, that brave, I'm not that brave lately. I'm rereading some of my old favorite books because they're safer. Oh, <laughs> that's good. That's good. Oh, Michelle, I have a book to recommend out of Africa. That's an oh, old yeah. one. That's an old that is that, such yeah. a by Isak Deanson. It's just that I've been wanting to reread that book for years. That would be good, Ruth. Yeah, that was that a movie? Movie? Yeah. wonderful. Yes, it oh, yes. was with Meryl Streep and okay, Robert yeah, yeah. Redford. Okay. You can watch oh, well. the movie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that would be so good. That, that, that would be a good classic. I mean, a good yeah. book. That's pro woman. Because she that was, was a phenomenal the 30s woman. And, things, and, and people did what they wanted then. I mean, mm -hmm. That's the, the turn of the uh, there's century. A book that's coming out now that's on um uh, that I net on Net Galley that I could get that I'd like to read. It's called Hitler's Girl. And it's about an upper class British woman, you know, who had a four-year affair and her whole family were with Adolf Hitler Hitler? With Hitler? Yes. And her whole what? family was pro-German because a lot of English people and my husband's people are from Scotland, but I don't think they believe that. But um a, a lot of people then thought that Germany had progressed and that because, you know, their currency and because their banks weren't failing and things like that, that they were pro-German. A whole mm -hmm. lot of the English people were until Churchill, because they, they the yeah, other prime minister was going to let them, was going to let them come over mm -hmm. and, you know, I into their land. English people hated the Germans. No, but they did There not. was a group, what a they, fascist yeah. group, wasn't there? There was a large fascist group, and a lot yeah. of them were lords and ladies. Mm -hmm. oh. Who could afford to do that? That, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Churchill probably which, wasn't one of them. His no, mother Churchill was wasn't. Think so. But one of which was Edward, the, the, um, the Edward, the kid that advocated, he had met with Hitler. Mm -hmm. he and oh, Simpson yes went, went, but yeah. he had his re yes but that was more for her um wallace War warfield simpson right. mm -hmm. she was the one that got him cozying up to germany well who's uh, who's our uh, guy that uh, you know traveled on the airplane <laughs> you know was the first plane across the uh Lindbergh, Charles Lindbergh. Lindbergh. He was into Hitler. Oh yeah, he I was. Mean, he too, was, yes. yeah, he met he was a German sympathizer. A lot yeah, of people, was. people who had met him personally, I guess he was very um, charismatic. You mm -hmm. know, and people who met him couldn't believe that he had evil thoughts. That's how he got away with what he got away with, killing all mm -hmm. these people. And then there's still people in Congress who are saying, "Well, the Holocaust was manufactured." Yeah. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what we should do. Send books to uh, our congressmen with information. Right. <laughs> Correct information, yes. We'll put and you we'll on have a book club, <laughs> <laughs> Well, the one I'm thinking about is a congresswoman, but we could send it to her. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. Jennifer, did you, I mean, um, Michelle, did you send any comments in about the book Never Enough to the publisher? I did, but I haven't, I haven't heard if they were, I never got any feedback from them. So I don't mm -hmm. know if they used it or not. So mm -hmm. if I do, I'll let you know. Okay. Yeah, let us know. Okay. That was good. Mm -hmm. Now I read the other Madison since we've talked about it and I um the, the lady with the blonde blonde hair that hasn't been zoom in I don't know her first name but she gave me her copy and um to read but I really thought that was a very interesting story and I don't the the DNA part I believe that story I don't, I don't see why anybody would doubt her story that hey. she's not a Madison oh uh, but you know she took just one type of DNA test there are other tests autosomal tests which would prove that they were part of that family well, that's what I don't understand. Why wouldn't she take an, but wasn't it the Madison relative ended up, he would not give the sample when he- But he doesn't told. have to give that sample. That's mm -hmm. the male DNA. The only sample she was able to get would have been male DNA. And they didn't have an, a known male that came from Madison to them. Right, on her side of the family. That. Oh, got it, okay. So- there's other types of DNA, and this is my thing, my DNA stuff, but there's other types of DNA that would prove cousinship between right. this black family and white family. Right. Okay. And I expect at some point in time, she may do that. Oh, okay. but you're supposed, are you saying she's holding that up herself or the No, Madison? I think that's what she was told was the best way to prove it mm -hmm. because well, it's a I touchy subject. It's a touchy subject. It is subject. a touchy subject. But the, that now her family was very accomplished. All her relatives. Right, but it was the Madisons, it was the white Madisons who said, well, we'll give you a sample, but, you know, and she was told that that's the best way to prove it, which it is the best way to prove it. If you can prove it. Um, but I mean, Jefferson, they were able to prove through DNA, you know, and I don't think that they proved well, they didn't prove down to his daughter because she wouldn't have had male DNA. You know what I mean? But the, but you don't have to have the male DNA is what you're saying. I you thought that's preposterous. Okay. You don't have to. If you have it, it's like slam dunk. It's like getting a, you know, playing horse shows and getting, you know, winning. You don't have to have that. I'm, for my DAR chapter, I am the DNA person I'm giving a report Saturday to, to a, a, a group because now the DAR says that, you know, people who are adopted can be in the DAR, but they You're have to kidding. prove it with DNA. Uh -huh. No, they say you have to prove it with DNA. And they're right now straddling. But that's because they're getting desperate for members, don't you think? Well, I don't think they're desperate for members. I think that they're getting critiqued really badly about it being, you know, this kind of protectionist, you know, society. Well, why would they let adopted people in then? If you, I mean, because if you, if it's it's the, I guess because it's the right thing to do, you know. Um, my mother, you know, when I said I was going to go into DAR, she said, why would you want to do that? Look what they did to Mary and Anderson. I can't believe it but my father's people you know they they served in the revolutionary war i just thought it was kind of nice do mm -hmm. i always like being there no but right now they're straddling the dna thing they're saying we're not just gonna do mail we want the male dna to prove that this male line looks like this but the other kind of dna which is autosomal dna is part of the whole package so at some point in time and some special cases and i have no idea, idea what they are are going to be able to prove just on cousinship but to the male line the proven male line if that makes sense but i thought There's your heritage than... was passed through your mother not your father no your heritage is 50 percent from your mother and 50 percent from your father bang <laughs> Well, You're of course, Mike, but I'm saying I thought in some, like 
in the Jewish culture, you're not Jewish unless your mother is Jewish. But that but, that's their culture. That's, that's not DNA. That okay. doesn't mean they're not Jewish. But why My do they sister, why do they talk in terms of male DNA? DNA is DNA. Why does it have to be from a male? That's what I don't understand. Well, there why is male DNA. DNA. It's a it's Y DNA. Only males have the uh, Y chromosome. Only males. But you're and, saying that that is not the only kind now. There's another. But it kind. wasn't like 20 years ago. I my, got you. I got my you. first okay. cousin tested in the National Geographic before Ancestry DNA was really there. And it was like, our Irish firstborn American grandfather matches this whole family line in Virginia on the Y line, just the male line. My cousin Francis, boom. Now, you know, we can see that we have cousin matches using the female autosomal, which is male and female. And it's not the female DNA, which is, and I shouldn't be going on, Michelle's going to play cut us off. Female DNA is mitochondrial DNA, and you only get that from your mother, and she gets it from her mother. You give it to your children, but only. Do you give it to only your female children? You no, give it you to give it to your, your children, but only your daughters can pass it on. Oh. It's male to male to male, just like the, the, you know, I mean, it's female 